It's the ultimate tapas TV show with a bit of everything for everybody. No need for your brolly here because of... The sunshine. The sun. The sun. Because it's all year round sunshine. No need to break the bank to visit... All value for money, cheapest chips and away you go. And no need to worry about the locals. They're very friendly. Welcome to the Costa del Sol. It's a holiday maker's heaven. A budget retiree's refuge and home to the classic expat Brits fantasy life. Every time we go into a bar, we consider moving over here, opening a bar. Yeah. Would be great, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would, especially because... It's got beautiful beaches, beautiful wine, beautiful food. And Jose? Not sure who Jose is, but that's why they'll always be bargain-loving Brits in the sun. Coming up, static caravan salesperson Bambi makes dreams come true. This is the best part of the job for me. Welcome to your new home. Oh. It's always a happy event. <laughs> Could it be a washout for new bar owners Lawrence and Lewis? We've had an absolute nightmare. The floor's been flooding. We've got no dishwasher. Potentially our busiest day of the year. And water sport boss Kev goes from pleasure provider to lifesaver. They've lost power and it's going to crash into the rocks. As we know, us Brits love our dogs, but there's one thing we tend to love just as much. Beer! <laughs> the beer's cheap. Uh, g and a big one. <laughs> you can buy a, a glass of wine for like one euro fifty. Very, very, very cheap in bars. So we're just going to go to a bar out, we have a few, uh, few little sherbets. Even armed with that knowledge, 53-year-old market trader Lawrence from London has taken 50 grand of his own cash and on a whim decided to buy a bar in the sun. And he's roped in his 28-year-old traveller stroke bartender son, Lewis. Um, I thought he was a bit mad because he literally called and said, son, I'm moving to Spain. I was like, OK, sure, why not? I worked on the Costa Blanca when I was 18, for about 18 months. And uh, ever since then, I think I always knew that eventually I'd get a bar out in Spain. Which was news to Lewis. He'd never even thought of doing something like this before, so I thought, you know, time to step in, help out, you know? Because? Well, my bar experience is um, zero. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's not that difficult, really. Sounds like a challenge to me. All right, go on, Dad, let's see the perfect pint then. OK, here we go. There we go, tilt the glass. As I said, absolutely nothing to it. And um, there's your perfect pint. That's not true. That looks like cider. To be a perfect pint, you need an index finger of head. There. See, now when you get people that are sort of beer snobs, <laughs> I'm not really into all that. OK, we'll have to agree to disagree on that one, I guess. But it's not all Dad and Lad Bantz. These two arrived four months ago, and until the summer season started, were making a loss. They're just about breaking even now, but there's a long way to go. At the moment, we're not taking a wage. We're not taking any money out of the bar. It's just a labour of love. You know, we're, we're working between 40 and 50 hours a week each, but, it, you know, it's all just going in just elbow grease, essentially. Dealing with this sort of pressure is all part of Lawrence's bigger plan for the bar and his son. Lewis um, is my oldest son, and I love him absolutely to bits. He's a bit like me, a bit of a dreamer, a bit of a head-in-the-clouds guy, and I just wanted to give him a bit of experience of running a business. I know he's looking out for me. I know that the reason he's doing this bar is so I've got some sort of, like, steady backing. Oh, good. <laughs> But with around 3,000 bars within a 10-mile radius, competition is fierce, and every day is a struggle to break even, so they come up with a plan. OK, well, today we've got an offer on, and it's uh, free shots every time England score. For guys like us, you know, guys at the beginning trying to win people over, establish ourselves, it's the big days like today that can make us or break us, you know. We need people to come in, remember they had a great time here, and come back. Well, that's the least of their worries. They've got a major problem. We've had an absolute nightmare this morning with our dishwasher. Um, it's, the floor's been flooding, but we've got a handyman on it. I'm feeling the pressure that, uh, in the knowledge that we're going to have an onslaught and I'm going to be on the bar going crazy. But I won't be able to manage the situation and do like 100 different drinks at the same time, you know? Today could be Lawrence and Lewis's biggest test yet. A bit of panic here at the moment. We've got no dishwasher. Potentially our busiest day of the year. That's not a good start. Back on the coast, on the outskirts of Fuengirola, its father and son team Lawrence and Lewis's most important day of the year, the Big England game. 
and they're trying to lure in the punters with a special offer. A free tiny tipple every time England score. But a technical issue with their TV stream has come to light that could cause the footy fans to flee to another bar. Right, next door we have a sports bar and they're about 30 seconds in front of us. And so, every time England score, yeah, we'll be about 30 seconds behind. So, that could be one little stumbling block for us. I know I'd find it annoying. They have to hope the special offer keeps bums on seats and their target for the day in sight. Our break-even number is around 550 euros a day. So anything after the 550 mark, that's when we start to make money, you know. I would say uh, if we do over a grand, that's a good day. But the busier it is, the more danger their free shot gimmick might backfire. With 50-odd shots going out for every goal, this idea could be a profit killer. And so, as you can imagine, that's a lot of shots to give out, especially if England win 5 0, we are in a bit of trouble. It's minutes after kickoff, the bar is full, and no one seems to have noticed the time delay issue until the first goal goes in. Right, so England have just scored, so uh, we're lining up the shots now. And 30 seconds later, in the lads' bar, the same goal goes in again. But at least the shots are ready. I hope England score seven goals. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Ian? Oh, really? Well, they all seem happy. Um, well, like I said, we've got a little bit of a time delay issue here, but uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting anybody. Everyone's happy. So um, we do know when to line the shots up, which is a good thing. It's a silver lining, I guess, and no one seems to be going anywhere quick, especially as the goals just keep coming. Well, we all know what that cheer from next door means. OK, so we'll get the rest of these shots out before England score again, hopefully. Uh, afraid not, Lawrence. Next door are cheering again. And I've not even dropped the, the, this one yet, so I've got another one to go. So we're, we're at this one. And another goal. I'm just getting the one here, aren't we? Like, come on! Sold a bit, yeah, but the, the shots have been obviously going out like mad. It's 5 0. Uh, three shots have been a great idea. I'm not entirely sure for the bar on it was a great idea. The poor guy's going out of business within a month, I think. Sorry, lads, I think you heard another cheer from next door. Uh, apparently, England have scored, so time to six. rack up 6 0. With the amount of free drinks well past the 300 mark, it seems the England fans are the winners. Spanish style, Spanish, Spanish style. style, okay. And the bar's profit is the loser. Well, do you know what? It wasn't actually my idea. Uh, I thought it was a good idea, but I wasn't expecting six. Yeah! Oh, I almost forgot the goal hadn't got in in the lads' bar yet. And we have still got about 35 minutes to go. Luckily, the England team do Lawrence and Lewis a favour and keep it to six. The drinks might have hurt financially, but they got some much-needed positive PR from the locals. The free shots went down pretty well. Uh, but all in all, yeah, it was, it was great fun and well worth doing. And I think everyone had a good time. So we haven't quite reached the target that I had in my own mind. Uh, but it, it's, it's OK. It's OK, yeah. There's no, no dramas. <laughs> Back on the coast, it's the end of the day and the end of Lewis and Lawrence's first summer season running a bar together. They're still standing and they're a lot wiser. Do you know what? It's, it's been a big learning curve, um, but it's been great. Roller coaster ride, but don't regret it at all. We've made lots of friends and uh, with lots of locals and uh, sort of, uh, we've got quite a loyal following here. So I think these guys are see us through the, uh, the hard times, the little hard winter here. Yeah. But more importantly, after five months, can Lawrence finally pull a decent pint of lager? Well, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of practice. I, I've been told that it's not that great, um, but I'm quite proud of it. I wouldn't be. You need an index finger oh, ahead. Index finger ahead. Pour some out. Pour some out to the point, and then put half pour on the. Um, and then it comes out just fine? Uh, I think it was just fine the way it was before, but my son's a little bit of an alcohol snob. No, I'm actually bar trained is what I am. 
But it's not about pulling perfect pints. It's about dads and lads. Being here and working with Lewis is... Sounds cheesy, it's, uh, it's a dream come true, because it's not quite like that. But it, it's been great, and to work with your son and to build something together has been really good and a really rewarding experience, and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. Oh.